Our next session is Jonathan Afterly from Accounting. Retail business, oh, retail management. business management. Sorry, in business. And he's going to talk about online okay. assessment. And now for something totally different from what we just had. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to talk about the challenges that we faced in trying to bring online assessment into accounting. Maybe start off with the um, the thought of let's keep it simple, but when you try and keep it simple, it's not always as simple as you as you thought it was going to be. So it might look simple, but it's, it's not always as simple as it looks. And then to follow that on with the message from the experts, uh, we've got uh, Stephen Covey there, begin with end in mind. Take a minute to read Mark Twain. <laughs> And haven't we all been there? We've been in class, we've been teaching, uh, we've been busy with the, with the students, and then we've asked the question. And while we've been asking the question, half the students are still trying to write down what we last said. Some of them haven't even started to think about what we're saying. Uh, others don't know what we're saying. And right at the front of the class, the clever kids put up his hand and already answered before anybody else had a chance to talk. So, you know, class-based learning has its benefits but obviously it has its disadvantages. If we're dealing with big groups of people, like in the, the case of accounting, you've got 120 students in class. Um, how, do you, how, do you, how do you bridge this? So perhaps you must begin with the end in mind. Why would you do this? Well, there's obvious benefits for us as lecturers. Uh, my marking time has dropped from four days to one day in terms of being able to mark 300 accounting students' papers. Uh, no paper, lovely, paperless having everything electronic online, but that's maybe not why you know, one would be doing it. I think you'd be doing it because of Bloom. You've heard of Bloom, but I'm not going to talk about the taxonomy. I don't even know what that means, but I'm going to talk about his two sigma problem, where he said, if you look at group learning, what you want to do is you want to try and move students from classroom students to mastery-based learning. If you get that right, and you can move them to tutorial learning, you get a two sigma improvement in results. So that's what it's about, improving how our students perform. So that, Gonna, I'm going to score out of not marking, but at the same time I want my students to perform. So, so what have we got? What's exciting and new on our side? We've got non-multiple choice online assessment. The myth is multiple choice. It's not multiple choice. We don't use multiple choice. We've managed to come up with a whole range of ways of assessing accounting without using multiple choice. Um, we've got computer marking assessments, and we can give corrective feedback immediately. A student can do a practice test. Whatever he gets wrong, he can immediately get feedback saying, go and have a look over there, go and have a look over there. And he can't move on until he becomes competent. He can't move on to the next part, which is your personal path tutorial. Via things that are already available in Blackboard called Advanced Adaptive Release, you can allow a student to progress once they hit a certain performance level. Isn't that beautiful? You could actually have do a module of work, set a couple of small little tests, and through the early warning system, it can also tell you when he hasn't done his work and say, hey, by the way, you haven't covered these modules. So you could make sure people become become basically, uh, you know, they've, they've mastered stuff which will move us ahead. And then of course Excel, we found that we can move Excel almost, you know, immediately into responders. And just some examples of the things that we've done, but we can go into that in detail, just some screenshots from, right, that's live at the moment, it's not like, you know, in theory. Uh, and here we, for example, go on and come up with what, what would we say if the guy gave the right answer, and what would we say if they gave the wrong answer. And if they gave the wrong answer, we tell them, go and have a look over here, and then do it over again until you get it right, until you've mastered it. Um, just giving you here a thing, for example, a VAT, a marker price, I don't want to bore you with retail, but how to look at ratios, assessing ratios as opposed to concepts, and concepts as opposed to ratios, and your old income statement, which we've I've never seen before, and a bank reconciliation statement. So what's possible is opportunity for them to practice, immediate feedback, individual paths for students, and setting competency levels to progress to the next level. But that sounds great. Let me give you the downside. Don't start mid-year like I did. That leads to petitions from students. And you have to ask the head of the department to save you. Don't start mid-year. Don't think students will love it immediately. They won't. They'll hate it. They'll give you a hard time. Don't give up when logic does not apply. I must tell you it does not apply. If you ask a student to write down a number, you get 15 different kinds of interpretations of a number. But don't give up. Don't expect seamless integration, like over here. You're not going to get a rabbit and a dog. Uh, it's going to take time. Don't be inflexible when things go wrong. They will go wrong. Be, be assured of that. Under, don't underestimate the logistical challenges which we face at the university. Availability of labs, double bookings, throwing people out of labs, these sort of things. And don't assume that students are computer savvy. Don't make that wrong assumption. But what you should do 
is start with a fresh intake of people or gradually implement. So start with the first years, next year. Then they don't know any different. They can't protest because it was this way, now we have to change. Uh, have an implementation plan. I can help you. I've been there, I've had the pain. So I can save you that pain in, in implementing it. Okay? Manage resistance to change, plan for logistics, and I'm almost done. So is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it because I'm seeing an improvement in marks. They're asking me for the practice test the students. They want immediate feedback and they're reviewing their own tests. So as a slam, I say, yes, it's worth it. <laughs>